Kia ora koutou, welcome back. Really lovely to have so many people with us this afternoon. Just waiting on a few. Uh, so we've got a, um, yeah, people here. Awesome. Really lovely to have you here. Welcome to those of us uh, who have been here all day and have had uh, trying to get the brain to take on all that new information and um, try not to get involved in conversations at the um, tea kettle. Um, that you want to have because you want to unpack all of that things and say, oh, we've just been in a really cool session talking about inclusive education, but I have to go. Um, come back to that conversation later. Uh, it's been uh, a yeah, real privilege to, um, to hear from ITE and members of the profession and other organisations today about um, things that I'm passionate about and uh, things that the Teaching Council are interested in and uh, really lovely to um, be able to have that conversation, be listening on a little part of that conversation and hear what's happening in the in the big wide world. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Linda. I am one of the lead advisors at Teaching Council um, and have the privilege of working at, with ITE um, as part of that work and with members, other members of the profession. So I'm going to quickly talk to you about our um, Kukari bulletin which will be going out to student teachers um Maya's kindly put the um link to it in the bulletin uh, the link to the bulletin in the chat so if you are in initial teacher education or if you have access to student teachers as an associate teacher or a mentor teacher or work in the community and you have come across a student teacher who doesn't know about our kukari bulletin then um let them know. So Kukari means the fledgling. So we think about our um, supported environment that we have in initial teacher education where our uh, junior colleagues are, are, are pre prepared for um, flight into the profession in um, a safe environment where they can where they can try things and they've got somebody to guide them along along that journey. And then um, they make that first flight into their first job as a um, registered and cert certificated teacher. And so we hope to be sitting alongside them and um, the Kukari Bulletin is an, as a space where we can sort of start them along that journey with the Teaching Council, um, where we can share some of the um, the work that the profession does, the um, ideas, things that might support them as they um, start that um, registration certification process. And also when we've recently, uh, we've had an uh, opportunity to try and get in touch with them in relation to things like COVID or other exciting things that are happening in the world, um, that we can have uh, a place to connect with them. So if you get a chance um, to share that with a student teacher, that would be amazing. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and if you need to know more, then you know where we are. Come and ask. Um, but I have the great privilege of introducing uh, one of our um, speakers this afternoon, and that's Kirsty, who is based in uh, EIT in the beautiful Hawke's Bay. Um, and Kirsty is uh, going to speak to us today about EIT's um, partnership with schools. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about it, Kirsty. I've been privileged to be part of the EIT journey for the last three years, so I've been involved at different points, and it's always good to touch base again and see where things are at now. So it's exciting. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Kirsty. Kia ora, Linda. E hoa mā, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Kirsty Jones tako ingoa. Nō Hawke's Bay ahau, ke EIT ahau e mahi ana. Kia ora tātou katoa. Te aroha, te whakapono, me te rangi māri e tātou tātou e. Te aroha, te 
pakapono me terangi mari e cha 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 ue uh, kia ora uh, tato um, my name is Kirsty Jones and uh, I'm one of the teacher educators at AIT and my main responsibility is for the uh, practicum, school-based learning and partnership with uh, schools. Singing along with me was my daughter who's 10 now. When our program first got underway and I first got involved with AIT, I was on maternity leave and um, she's just had a day year six day out today and, and come home from school and uh, I'm working from home so I had to be involved a, a, a little bit so she's now gone off to, to do her own thing and grandma's here to take her to ballet shortly so COVID has it, working from home situations and, uh, and that's what it's that's what it's like and and that's the really awesome thing Tilly also goes to one of our partnership schools which is also pretty awesome uh, so today I'm just going to speak really briefly with you a little bit about um, our partnership journey with the schools that we have and um, yeah, just go through what we went, some of the ways we have developed and grown as partners and some of the things that helped make it work and where we are in the journey and uh, the journey's not over for any of, of us yet so uh, just to to start with the program so um, our program is on two campuses it's a bachelor of teaching primary and we have a program operating at Tairawhiti and we also have a program operating in Hawke's Bay uh, where where I am uh, we have 120 candidate teachers at the moment just so that you know we call everybody in our program has the name teacher in their title and that was a um we we did that purposely because we wanted everyone to understand that they were part of a teaching degree and that they were there to teach so we don't call our um students students we call them candidate teachers They're, being candidates in the profession from the time they get accepted for our program. Our program runs face-to-face uh, -face and online and um, so and, and we have two days a week on campus at EIT and two days away a week away in our partnership schools and there are 35 schools in the program at the moment that we partner with and we also partner with another about 65 schools that partner with us for our practicum placements. So we have 35 partnership schools that partner with us for school-based learning and for practicum. And then another, as I say, 65, 70 odd that partner with us for practicum. And we call our partners for practicum our away school placements. Uh, how we got to where we are, in 2009, Massey um, withdrew their program from the Hawke's Bay. So we didn't have an ITE program in Hawke's Bay. And uh, there was a moratorium on uh, new initial teacher education programs as well as at that time. So a group of local principals, about seven or eight of them, got together and they approached EIT and asked EIT to partner with them to apply for an exemption to the moratorium. And EIT agreed to do that. That was before my time, but um, I was a DP in one of the local schools at that time. So I did know that this was going on. There was a feeling that um, Hawke's Bay needed a place for initial teacher education. Principals in the area weren't happy with um, the fact that um, unfortunately Massey had withdrawn and we didn't have one and um, weren't happy with the caliber of teachers that were coming through so they wanted something in their area that was local that was uh, contextually relevant for them. The exemption was granted and uh, then between so 
in a very short space of time, we developed a program and started delivery in 2012. Um, as I say, I then timely went on maternity leave and was seconded to AIT to help write the program. And once it was written, I was then employed to deliver it. So I was in a really fortunate position of um, being part of it right back 10 years ago when it was first started, or more than 10 years ago now. Back um, in 2012, these were the founding principles. When we worked with our seven or eight principles to get underway, um, and I, when I say principles, then I'm talking about principles in the education uh, setting, the seven principles that approached for the exemption, they were very clear that they wanted the program to be practice-based, that they wanted the candidate teachers to spend a significant amount of time in schools, that it wasn't just to be run at, on campus. So that was, that, that was something that we had to develop within the program back then. And they wanted the program to be delivered in association with local schools. And it was to embrace partnership, integration and collaboration. So we were um, very lucky when we fast forwarded to this year, because last year we underwent um, our approval under the new guidelines and um, we had already had over 10 years experience working in a practice based kind of situation and, and having very close relationships with our schools. And so when we reviewed our program and our new program is different and there is a lot of development within it and we have changed a lot over the 10 years that we've been working on it, but those founding principles are still there. We still have a practice based program. We still have our candidate teachers spending a significant amount of time in school each week. Our program is still developed and delivered in association with our local schools. And we still embrace partnership, integration and collaboration. Back in 2012, we had five partnership schools and 30 candidate teachers. So comparatively today to having our 35. So we've certainly grown over time. Um, they, um, the key things around our authentic, authentic partnership, and I will talk about a couple of situations that have arisen because it's not always, the times aren't always good. We do have bad times working with each other, but these are the things that seem to have come through over the time that we've worked together. We have, out of the 35 schools, we can count on one hand how many schools have withdrawn from the program. Um, there's very few. So uh, they're willing to stick with us in the bad times. And some of you may know that this year particularly has been a, a particularly difficult year for us at AIT and our candidate teachers were in the media um, earlier in the year and that has that, that has been a particularly uh, tricky and challenging time for all of us. And so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a while. But these are the things that seem to hold us together as a group and hold the partnership together. There's this enduring commitment and I'm not sure where it's come from, but it's there. And when things aren't going well, our schools don't pull out. They commit tighter and we seem to grow stronger together and we seem to rally around uh, a bit like a Fano and just get in and do what we need to do to wrap around the support to each other. Uh, we, we have this strong shared ownership and I think we've only just got to this point of having real shared ownership. I smiled this morning when Kelly sort of gave us the, the top 10 tips about relationships. Uh, we've certainly moved on from the hand-holding stage. And I think prior to this year, we were sort of at, at that phase of we've married, we've got the kids, we've got the family running pretty well, but we also are really happy to say they're yours when they're bad and they're ours when they're good. 
Awesome. Um, after what we've been through this year, and we've come out the other end, and we've got really positive things happening and some um, strategies in place, and a, a, a strong shared ownership of what it means when someone is going through a tricky time and, and when the media is involved and how we understand all of the parties and work through that together. We've really developed the sense of actually in the bad times they're ours and in the good times they're ours. Uh, we do lots of consultation and lots of review and we're lucky we are and we're under no illusions we are a boutique uh, program. We only take 30 candidate teachers every year and um, we're full now. We've done our, all of our interviewing. We've accepted all of our candidate teachers. We were able to turn people away and um, we're not in a position of, of having to look for 120 or 200 people. That, that's all we can hold is 30. So we have the ability to be close know our candidate teachers well, know the people that we're working with within our schools really, really well. And we also have the um, beauty of having all of our EIT staff that work on the programme having worked in the schools alongside some of those teachers and colleagues and principals that are there. Um, we've again and again come up as being nimble. If we get a, a call from the, a school to say, hey, this has happened, or we ring a school to say, hey, this has happened. We're, we're quick to respond and we're quick to support each other. And that's really important in situations where our candidate teachers may be having a crisis right then, right now. Um, so we have that ability and um, to, to be nimble and to respond quickly. And we have also over the years put in place some boundary obje objects that have been um, a real godsend. We haven't realized that we didn't realise at the time that they were. So they're really basic things like a mental teacher planner that we develop. We've actually last week just had our big uh, end of year get together with all of our partners and we develop a mental teacher planner for the following year together that has sort of the um, all the, the things that are needed for the following year around our courses, what the school's doing, what EIT is doing, how we're working together and that kind of thing. So those boundary objects mean that we've got some policy in place, we've got some documentation in place, we've got some processes in place, we've got some shared agreements and then I can take those when I go and teach the AITs and as long as I'm keeping to those principles I can do things my way and each of our schools can do things their way within those principles and and we're all um, you know all carrying on in the uh, same way we're all we're all walking the same journey uh, we've done uh, when we developed our new program we've these are the kinds of things that we worked on together and again as I said before we do lots of consultation and lots of review and it takes time and um, EIT is prepared to fund that time and it's helpful. We've managed to spend quite a lot of time under unpacking our code, our standards and saying, well, so what does that look like in a supportive environment when our candidate teachers are at EIT? And what does that look like um, when our candidate teachers are in schools? We haven't finished working on the key teaching tasks, even though that we've put them in place um, already. Um, but, um, the key uh, teaching tasks are something that we're talking about and developing um, together so that we understand how we're going to assess them or what we're going to look for both when they're working at, in schools and um, what they're doing within their assignments. So at the moment, our document around that is a bit clunky. It's going to be a huge piece of work for us next year. Uh, we work together on the culminating integrative assessment and we're only up to year two of our new degree so we haven't implemented that uh, part of our program yet. Uh, we work together on what the program would look like and we also work together reviewing all of the courses and changing those and what our school-based learning components would look like and, and what our campus-based learning components would look like. One of the really important things there 
one of the things that we've grown to learn together. When we first started out, the teachers used to see the teacher educators as um, the, the theory people, the people that um, had all the theory but didn't have a clue about what that looked like in school. So our candidate teachers in the early days would go into schools and they'd say, oh, forget about what you learned at AIT, here's the real world. And it, it, didn't, it didn't do well in, in valuing the program and both parts of the program. And so we did quite a lot of talking about how actually theory and practice run hand in hand. And um, initially what it did was it said, to, it said to the candidate teachers, I don't need to worry about what happens when I'm on campus, but I do need to worry about it when I'm in front of, of the um, students that I'm teaching. And it, it meant that they were then trying to deliver uh, teaching and learning to children without having that strong theoretical background and actually valuing the theoretical background. So over the time that we've done a lot of talking around school-based learning and campus-based learning being the courses and together in a combined um, part of the program, it's helped also to for the teachers that are in the schools to actually really understand why they do what they do um, as well and seeing things from a theoretical perspective. So it's grown everybody along the way. And the teacher educators by being out in the schools and spending time working with candidate teachers in schools, they're developing that practice and they're also working with students and so modeling to our candidate teachers that they too can teach children. Um, so, so that has been really valuable. Um, yeah, so with our with our school with our mental teachers and our um, uh, our principals and our teachers, we have briefings with them regularly. We visit the schools regularly, and we I've, I've talked about these things. These are our boundary objects that are there. Um, so some of the insights, but before I kind of um, talk about that a little bit, I'll just talk to you a weeny bit about the uh, uh, Matua Fire. For those of you that don't know, two of our candidate teachers went to a school and they wanted to be uh, called Matua and Fire. And we have had many times when this has happened. And in fact, they even had it on their name badge, which was just something that we didn't ever talk about. They just did it. We just assumed that that was going to be okay. And they got to a school and, and the principal told them that he didn't agree with it and he didn't want them to have that title. Um, and that they were to be Mr, Miss, Mrs, but not fire, not matua. And so they, um, they came back to EIT. EIT tried to work with the school um, and the school didn't want to shift or move on this particular issue. And I need to say too that we, we have had a number of issues over the years where we've gone back to the school and been able to work to resolve it. But this was a particular issue where the principal felt really strongly and didn't want to resolve it. So we worked with the candidate teachers to find a resolution that they were happy with. And um, as an aside, yes, they were happy with the resolution we'd found, but as it's an aside to it, they then went to the media to talk about the Matua fire situation as a bigger, bigger issue. And uh, what actually happened then was it, then um, the issue about Matua fire blew out to being in the media around the school. And, and so initially it created a lot of um, challenges for us. But what we agreed to do was we pulled all the schools together and what we agreed to do was to find a way forward that everybody could feel comfortable with. And so we involved our candidate teachers and our schools and we really talked openly around the issue and uh, we developed a more robust kind of flowchart for dealing with uh, complaints and concerns. And so I suppose what I'm saying is, it, it, and, and now that is in place and we all feel really comfortable that if something arises again, 
that we'll be able to find a way forward together. And so I suppose what I'm saying around it is that the partnership that we had and the fact that we were prepared to compromise, prepared to be honest, prepared to be transparent, to prepared to say, take away the issue and, and just talk about how do we resolve these things when we come head to head about something and we can't find a way forward just by talking it through. And, um, and we've found a new boundary object that we're gonna put in place going forward. And the really nice thing is that we haven't lost our partners. We were really worried that it would have a huge impact on our program. We haven't lost our partners. We haven't lost the respect for each other. The principal involved in it uh, that was at the center hasn't lost his mana and, and the CTs that were involved haven't either. But um, it didn't come without its challenges, um, that, that situation. So I suppose uh, the key insights for us is investing in time rather than incentives. Our schools do get a payment. They get a very small payment for AIT. And they say that it's only enough to pay for the biscuit, the cheese and crackers and the tea and coffee for the candidate teachers that they have at their school. Um, it doesn't pay for the release time that the mental teacher needs or the effort, time and effort they uh, put in. But they see that the greater benefit of having candidate teachers in their school and seeing these teachers grow uh, and then get employment in our area. And I'm just about to start a piece of research because we've got a number of candidate teachers who are um, now in leadership roles so they've graduated they're working in our local schools they're in um, leadership roles in our local schools and this year for the first time one of our mental teachers was one of our uh, graduates so they're now giving back into the program so that's really exciting for us so investing in time rather than incentives pause and pivot which is what we did this year uh, with the matua fire situation we responded and back each other up, you know, the our, not the your or the mine. And, and the Matua fire has helped really cement that. They're, they're ours and um, we're proud of them in good times and in bad. We compromise for a win-win um, and we keep that greater good in mind. And um, I suppose the most recent thing, just to, to finish off, is we went into lockdown for this... Um, second time when our third years were, had been out for four days. They'd been out on their final practicum for four days and uh, we went into lockdown. And um, we rallied round and said, man, so what, what do we do? Do we cancel our 705 practicum? Do we try to change it to later in the year? Or how do we make this work? So we got together with our partners, our candidate teachers, our associate teachers, our school principals that were involved. And we said, so here are the learning outcomes and you're about to go and teach in lockdown online. How can we make this work? How can we make 12 days major responsibility? How can we make that, what does that look like in a lockdown space? And we spent some time working together and then each of the candidate teachers worked really closely with their schools and their associate teachers and they came back to us and said, here's what it looks like for me in my situation and in my context and this is how I will meet the learning outcomes. And all 30 of them managed to provide us with really, really strong evidence of how they had met the learning outcomes in that lockdown online space. And then they did actually go back for the last week, we, were, we went to level two. So for the last week, they went back face to face. So we feel really proud of that. And we don't think that we could have done that unless we had those 35 schools and those other 65 partners that, were, that knew us and were prepared to work closely with us to develop those kinds of um, outcomes for our candidate teachers. And one of the things that our candidate teachers said to us when we evaluated with them was that they feel really confident that if next year they were thrown into lockdown, that they would know what they needed to do 
to uh, connect with their class as a first year teacher. So yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's not uh, um, easy all of the time, but those really happy ever after stories make it, make it worthwhile. Uh, yeah. Kia ora Kirsty, um, Bill Hubbard here from the council. Um, that is a terrific account of what can be done when you've got your eyes on authentic partnership. That was honest. You said that it's, you acknowledge it's not always easy. Um, you talked about the reciprocal benefits and about that loyalty that has to happen um, between one another. So thank you so much. Um, we probably don't have um, time for questions for Kirsty right now, because we've got to move on. Um, we've got another um, IT provider with partners appearing now. And I also want to acknowledge that um, we were to have had University of Waikato um, talking about their uh, new partnership project. Um, they've said, hey, look, can we refine it a bit and come back to you next year? So we'll hear from them maybe another time. So I'd like to introduce um, Kylie Smith um, and of uh, MIT up here in Tamaki Makoto. Kylie is the head of school and MIT have been through two program approvals in 2020 and 2021, one each year. Um, Kylie's going to talk with her partners, their partners, um, about the Primary Pacifica program. And I'm going to um, invite Kylie to speak for Kylie to introduce her partners. And if there's any time, sort of if, if it's about 20 minutes or something, we might have time for a quick few questions before we do a wrap up. So over to you, Kylie, thanks for appearing. Kia ora. Can I double check that everyone can see the screen with Hi. now? Okay, excellent. Uh, well, kia ora. As, as Bill said, uh, I'm Kylie Smith uh, from uh, Manukau Institute of Technology. Um, really proud to be able to share with you today our journey towards partnership um, with some of our partners who are here today, who I'll introduce very shortly, um, around our new uh, Bachelor of Education Primary Pacifica. Uh, so I will say also on the back of um, Kirsty's presentation that EIT very kindly gifted their program to us and we spent the following two years refining that for a Tamaki Makoto space. So um, there are some similarities but also some significant differences as well. So uh, I won't necessarily repeat anything that um, has come across from Kirsty already because there are some similarities such as school-based learning uh, but also some, some differences which I'm I'd like to be able to to share with you. So can I just very briefly introduce you to some of our partners who we've got here today. So we're very lucky. I put the call out mid last week and as you know, no surprise, our partners have come back to us and said, yep, we're there, which has been amazing. Um, so today we have uh, Lisa from uh, Willowbank Primary, Sue Dawson from Clendon Park, uh, John Shearer from Sir Edmund, Sir Edmund Hillary and Janet from Finlayson Park. So I think I can't see my screen with you guys on it, but I, I had seen that you were there. So welcome and thank you so much for joining us. And what I'm hoping to do after I've given a very brief introduction to the program and what we do is that you guys can give your perspective on how things have worked for you as partners, because actually it's really about you guys. Um, and of course, we have some of our team here as well. Uh, so we've got some of the teaching team here, Emma, Fatma and Leela, um, also to be able to share about the program. Um, but essentially this program is uh, was new for us. We had not taught uh, primary education before. Uh, similar to uh, EIT, uh, where another provider had moved out of the space, uh, we had Auckland University, who were um, instituted at MIT, uh, who also who moved out. So we were very lucky, and it's always been one of our goals to be able to uh, replicate what we do really well in, in an early childhood IT program and replicate that in a primary space. And so our journey actually started in September of 2018. So it's actually been a really long process um, and long because it, it required that amount of time and long actually because I'll talk about some of the vulnerabilities that we had. So just going back to Kelly's presentation earlier. Um, around the, the 10 principles of a good marriage. Um, vulnerability was one of them that we worked um, we worked through because it was a new context for us. We didn't have lecturers in the program uh, in, our, in our current school who had come from a primary context. So um, we really were drawing very heavily on our partners um, who I hope has also seen such a strong investment from them. 
Um, so one of the key differences with our program is that the conceptual framework is underpinned by um, the Fatuna Titi, which is the, the process of, of weaving the Titi or the ceremonial band um, in, Pacifica, in Pacific cultures. Uh, so you can see there a picture that actually took us a visual representation that probably took us a good uh, maybe 18 months to come to. We uh, employed um, an artist to be able to draw together some of the feedback that we had from our partner schools about how we really um, were able to reach out, I guess, to in Auckland, we're so multicultural and we really needed to make sure that this program, that, that students were or potential students were able to identify themselves in this program. Um, and, and it's set apart, of course, because it's 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 based in schools. So two days a week in a school situation, plus two days a week uh, with us on campus. So you know, this uh, this drawing, I guess you could say, is a, while it might seem very simple that this hand drawn thing, there there have been so many iterations of this over time, and where we've landed, I think, and with our partners, we're really happy that this actually does solidify what we do with this program and and how it underpins everything that we do, the weaving of the the teaching and learning and, and that knowledge with students over time. So we've had this program approved. So one one minor correction, Bill. We've had two IT programs approved in 2021. So 2021 has been a big year for us. Uh, our early childhood program just recently in September and our Bachelor of Education Primary Pacifica in March this year. Um, adding on to that, of course, COVID lockdowns in Auckland, which we're still going through at the moment. Um, it's in, indeed been a very big year. Um, this conceptual framework, I think, has been really important to underpinning uh, or the underpinning principles for this program have really uh, solidified what, how and why in terms of the, our partnerships and the authenticity of partnerships with, um, with those who are equally as invested in our student journey. Um, we have started with a, a relatively small group of partner schools uh, for good reason. We want to make sure that we refine it, we get it right, and that it really meets the need, um, particularly of our South Auckland community before we start adding in uh, additional schools for, for whether it be for, for block practica or um, as additional school-based learning um, settings. So we've been really lucky to work with a group of probably 12 to 14 schools, and we have started with a small cohort in semester two of this year, uh, again, to be able to refine what we're doing and, and um, be able to you know, really make sure that the program meets the needs of, of the schools that we're working with. Uh, further complicated, of course, by the fact that our students were only in a classroom for, I think, two weeks before we went into lockdown and have not been able to return. Uh, so we have been very lucky that the schools we've been working with have been amazing, and I, some of the team are going to share a few examples of that in a moment, um, that we've really drawn on scenarios and, and practical ways of, of what happens in the classroom um, and true, you know, those 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 tangible stories that, that students can draw on um, that really solidify their own learning if they can't actually be in a classroom, uh, ours or in a school setting. Um, so I guess some of the things that we have worked with, um, I've just tried to keep things very brief in terms of what partnerships look like then, now and, and in the future, because it's never going to be finished. And I think that's the critical thing. We'll always be refining and coming back to um, what we're doing. You know, those key teaching tasks are a good example that while we have uh, a selection at the moment, those may change. Uh, you know, making sure that our, at the moment our commenting and integrative assessment is what it is, but we actually won't have any students completing that for another at least two years yet, uh, because of course we're starting from the beginning. So, you know, we're always in a period of, of, of change and negotiation with our partners to make sure that we've got the right, the right program for them. So, as I said, um, just going back to what we're doing and why and approaching it with a real vulnerability, because this was new for MIT, uh, you know, primary education wasn't something that we'd done before. So we were dipping our toe in the water with vigour, uh, making sure that we wanted to get this right and drawing on the schools um, that actually had reached out and, and came in September of 2018 um, with to MIT with a proposal. Um, Sue Dawson, you were one of those, with those key members um, and asked us to put together a program that was vocational in nature um, and allowed uh, graduates to be able to hopefully be employed in the communities that they, were, that they had done their, their teaching practices in, or should I say their program study in. And that's certainly our intention over time. 
Um, so again, it's something that we were already doing really well in terms of um, initial teacher education. Our early childhood degree is really successful. So we knew, we knew what vocational education looked like and we wanted to pursue that in a primary context. So starting with that small group of, of partner schools was really important um, and really, really, I guess, solidifying that as a, as a community of learning that we wanted um, schools to be able to take multiple students. And over time, we're hoping that schools will take uh, students in years one, two, and three. So not only is that a, the school a community of, of practice and a community of learning, but actually you've got students within that group who are able to support each other and that's uh, to a kind of Taina type model. Um, one of the, some of the things that we've had to, to work through over time uh, that I guess have been different perhaps to how EIT have done things was the payment to associate teachers. So actually right down to the wire really and um, more probably April, May this year, we've refined how we make payment to associate teachers and, and have actually aligned more to the collective agreement. So making sure that the, the teachers get a pro rata payment for um, what they do with, with our students, as opposed to a lump sum payment, which is what other providers are potentially doing. Um, so we've obviously had COVID and in Auckland it is a little different. We have been in lockdown for such a long time and our students haven't necessarily been able to go, our students haven't been able to go back um, into classroom settings, uh, but we've been very well supported by the school uh, community, the school's community that we uh, work with. Um, and, you know, in terms of that practical assessment, because being, uh, you know, a field-based or a school-based learning uh, program, we really wanted to ensure that assessments were very much driven and related to students' practice. And uh, if they haven't been able to be in practice, how do we make sure that we retain that? And so some of the team have worked really closely with some of our partner schools to be able to, to maintain that integrity of those assessments, um, even if a student can't be in the classroom. And as I said, that this is an ongoing uh, co-design of teaching and learning over time. So maybe I might just throw it open to the teaching team first. Um, Fatma, I think you had a really good example of how you've been able to draw on um, some of the schools to be able to support what you're doing in a practical context. Would you like to share that? Kia ora koutou koutou. Um, uh, my name is Satma James. I'm one of the um, teaching teams in the Bachelor of Education Primary Pacifica. Yes, um, our wonderful partner schools have um, played a, a really, really integral role in terms of jumping in and um, you know, without with very, very little notice and, um, and working really hard. Um, to be there for our students. Um, because of the lockdowns, obviously, we, um, the students weren't able to be at uh, the school-based learning. And um, there are some of the assessments where they had a lot of um, uh, practical components um, and uh, our schools um, came in and um, uh, we, we kind of created scenarios instead of, so they had to work with different scenarios. Schools recorded um, uh, teachers' experiences where um, the student teachers then took these scenarios and they use them as, as practical on a practical basis just to harness that um, vocational component um, for, for, um, uh, for the program, obviously. And um, uh, like I said, with very little notice um, uh, and some of them, um, they were dealing with their own um, lockdown restrictions and uh, regulations and placing, um, you know, students in different bubbles and so on. Um, uh, re regardless and in spite of that, uh, most of the schools came in um, and, and jumped in. And, and in terms of um, things like standardized assessments, some of our students, they, they're, they've just only just started. They're at level five of their degree. Um, and they came in and they don't know what a running record looks like, uh, what a, a PAT um, assessment looks like in a primary school context. Um, and so um, the, the schools jumped in again um, and they worked with, um, with uh, myself as well as um, the students. So um, I might, um, I'm not, I can't really see Lisa there, but I might um, uh, hand it up to Lisa to, to talk to you more about that. It's one of our um, partner schools, Willowbank. Uh, kia ora. Hi, Fatima. Um, yes, yeah, so we, um, first of all, um, feel that being involved in this program um, has been a huge privilege um, and 
uh, we felt really honoured to be asked. So um, it's important for us that we continue to um, be able to support even through COVID. And as Fatma said, there were challenges for us as well. But um, we felt, felt very strongly that these students still deserved to um, have all the support they needed, despite the fact that they couldn't be in our schools. Um, so yes, we recorded uh, interviews with teachers um, talking about learners, um, which was almost as good as the students being in the class, um, and uh, provided you know assessment examples and that kind of thing, so that um, Batma could work through them with her students. Um, and that's I think one of the the huge. Uh, benefits that I believe in this program is that right from the beginning of the, um, the teacher training that they are actually getting very very practical on the ground skills that you know for a long time I've felt was missing um, in young teachers coming out that they really had no idea of some of the nuts and bolts and the daily bread and butter of teaching, um, which is not their fault. It just was the way it is. So it's really exciting and wonderful to learn that these students are getting that knowledge right from the word go. So um, we felt you know, really uh, happy to be able to support with, with that area. Kia ora, Lisa. Always appreciate um, uh, you know your feedback, and I think it's important that you know in this context that um, this group gets to hear from some of our partner schools. And uh, John, I see you're here, and Sue, also one of the founding members, I guess, of, of this group, uh, and Janet, also another founding member. Is there anything that you guys would like to be able to add in terms of um, you know what's worked for you in terms of partnership yeah. at this beginning Hi. stage? Thanks, Kylie. Lovely to see you. We have the most, uh, the utmost um, respect for you in the way that you've you've um, developed this program with your colleagues. So I'm sorry very much. I kind of got cut off. Um, I signed on at three thirty uh, through Kirsty's um, uh, presentation. But yeah, listen, I met, I missed you, Lisa. But I would say that the best thing that's ever happened was what MIT have done that's very different to everyone else. So look, uh, I might have been part of the um, uh, journey, the continuum, the journey that we went through to get this program up and running. But in actual fact, when it was launched, or just about to be launched, what I thought was absolutely wonderful was um, Kylie and Fatma, in fact, you invited our senior management staff, our teachers to put their hands up to take your students, and anyone else that we wanted to send. And I felt, honestly, Kylie, we've never struck anything like that before. Um, I think as the leaders in the school, as, um, as uh, you know, associate people who might be stepping forward, that you gave us all the opportunities to be in touch with you, to come to a for, to a meeting um, with beautiful food, I might add. Um, but we were able to look at your program and ask you questions and your whole team was there. I just thought it was really awesome. And um, obviously, you know, it has resulted in a number of our staff, I know from my school, wanting to be involved in this program. We don't get the same uh, thing from our other tertiary educators. So um, I just feel that our own personal involvement and in, in, we felt a real partnership, actually, Kylie and Fatma, we felt that you if we said no we don't like this at all that we could have continued to work together and say we'll work on this and make it make it work for us so 
I just want to say thank you because I think Kylie, you've you guys have done a wonderful job and yeah support you all the way and we are very particular about students that come into our school um a bit of a great pity about covid indeed in auckland but hey kylie we're gonna get there and i mean we'll have our student on site next year and we are really looking forward to having her because we know and we've shared, understood and agreed what we are about in progressing the students through the she three de three year degree. Namihi. Where are you, Kylie, in your background? Do you have you, sir. where? So what you what have you got sitting behind you, Kylie? I'd love to know. Is it Hawaii? If only. No, actually, that's campus. Um, it's just I can't be there. Uh, mm -hmm. So th this is uh, part of the oh, deal with building it. on campus. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Kylie. Is there anyone was, else who'd like to add? I was wondering really too if you've got a little bit of time left over, whether or not, because it's 20 past uh, four, we're closing up at 4.30, so maybe if there's five minutes for questions, sure. if you had some time left over, because... Um, people listening to you. Happy to answer anything. Well, I'll jump up and say, no, we don't have any questions because I think that MIT and their team have taken that time with our mental teachers, our uh, management team, and they've answered probably every question we put to them um happy to go love the program and will always support MIT's program love it thank you um, and I guess just going back to what Sue's just been talking about there is that um you know we, we have accepted some feedback that we didn't necessarily um aim to work towards so we were aiming towards a you know a, a bulk payment as an example um or a small stipend I guess you could say um to cover the cheese and crackers um but actually the schools came back to us and said no we don't want that we want we want our associate teachers to be paid individually so actually we we did pursue that and we did go down that 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 road of you know working with um education payroll which has been um, an interesting um, process and uh, you know making sure that they you know that associate teachers got that uh, pro rata payment for the two days per week and, and actually I think that that was a, a really important step in making sure that we were being respectful of, of what the schools wanted rather than what was e not necessarily what was easiest for us because it's not necessarily easier but actually no. making sure that they got what they needed. So look I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any but um, ultimately that's uh, that's where we are it's a work in progress. If I could just put in one minute, it's the same as the email. Sorry, John, you go. <laughs> Apologies. It's one of the <laughs> things about Zoom. Look, just want to, again, commend the MIT program. Uh, it's been thoughtful, reflective, listening to people on the ground, the needs and concerns of the schools, and then embedding the teachers into, or the prospective teachers into the system, that apprenticeship model. Um, hugely successful, I think it's going to be. Yeah, we're breaking up with COVID, um, but okay, we'll start a little bit again. We'll get it right. Uh, but I, I firmly approve of the model. And I think we'll get some good practitioners out of it. And who knows what we trade we might keep. Kia ora, John. Say, John. Say, lovely, summer, John. Okay, talo for lover. My name is um, Janet Tavui from Finlayson Park School. Hi, Janet. Lalo so full of sumo pulea onga too. Just to, just an addition um, to what the wonderful principals have just shared. I guess the, um, our partnership with MIT was based on trust and just the quality and mutual understanding and just the obligations as well. And just to agree to cooperate, to advance to mutual interest. I mean, uh -huh. we're really blessed um, to be part of this program. And, and for me, I guess the journey has been really fantastic working alongside some fantastic experts um, and expertise that were part of this advisory team. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the journey. And as Fire Sue had mentioned, you know, there's always um, room. I wouldn't say for not only for improvement, but for success and for achievement. 
So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, just something I'd just like to add on. So I'm really looking forward to it. But a uh, special acknowledgement to MIT, Kylie and your team. Um, you know, it's been a privilege and it's been an honor and it's my biggest greatest blessing to work alongside some fantastic, passionate um, experts in the Pacifica education sector. So, sure. you know, just really proud and just in that, in that real um, sense of, I guess the word would be humbling to know that we have a Pacifica teaching program. And, you know, and it's out there for all that we know and everybody else that knows that is right for, I mean, that will love to be part of this journey. So, Papa Tai. This is, this is terrific feedback, um, uh, MIT and partners. Um, I am conscious that we've only got five minutes left, so I'm going to hand over to Talia, who would like to say a few words, and then uh, we're going to go towards a close up. Talia. Okay, thanks, Phil. Um, I'm the initial teacher education advisor here at the Teaching Council. It's really great to put faces to to names and on behalf of all my colleagues I'd like to really thank our providers and partners for contributing to this um, important partnership sharing co-papa. Um, firstly to Kirsty, thanks so much for sharing EIT's partnership journey in the Bachelor of Teaching Primary. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing the way EIT have embraced the partnerships. It was really interesting to hear the parts that have held your partnerships together. Um, and thanks for sharing so openly and honestly um, about EIT's insights into the partnership. So nyamihi. Um, also, thank you, Kylie and um, Emma and Fatma and partners Janet, John and Sue and I think Lisa was there as well. Um, yeah, Kylie, thank you for sharing MIT's partnerships in the Primary Pacifica program. Um, you really took us on a journey of what the partnerships have looked like in the past, um, present and going into the future. Um, yeah, really interesting to hear about the ways that MIT have navigated partnerships with COVID as well. Um, and wow, it just came alive. Those partnerships came alive. Um, so thank you so much to your partners for sharing as well. You've really illustrated to us the strength of the partnerships. Yeah, so nya mihi kia koutou. Thanks for inspiring us today. And I'll just hand over to Kelly, who will close <laughs> us today. Kia ora, thank you, Talia. Um, kia ora, ora rawa atu. It's just been a, a wonderful day. <laughs> I'm actually um, astounded. It's been such a, a, a wonderful experience for us at the Teaching Council to hear the voices of our providers and their partners and, um, and our partners as well. Um, and so I'd just like to thank everybody for your contribution today, for um, coming, participating, engaging in the content, um, engaging in discussion. Uh, it's been wonderful. And I'll just ask um, Maya to pop up our last slide. So I started today talking about uh, your top 10 tips for marriage. And I just thought I'd just revisit those um, as a close off today. So the first one was spending time together. And we heard Lexi this morning talking about how trust takes time and how important trust is in relationship and partnership. Um, and Janet from um, the MIT team just spoke um, now about how important um, that their relationship was based on trust and how that time, it took time to, to get to that point. Um, and Kirsty also talked about time as being an investment. Our second one was uh, learning to negotiate conflicts. And Tamaho this morning Man. talked about um, having a values led, um, which values led approach, which leads to our behaviors and um, holding this true to this through the good and the bad times um, is, is a really important way to negotiate those conflicts. And he was talking about the uh, takaihere or the lashings and the tawaka haurua and iwi relationship model um, and how that's so important when we were negotiating our conflicts with our partners. Number three, show respect for each other at all times. Uh, once again, Tamaho we heard him talk about um, how important it's it's not so much the who but it's the how of the partnership 
um, to be mana enhancing at all times. Um, MIT, Kylie talked about um, the way that the lockdown difficulties were negotiated so successfully because they had the respect for each other in that difficult time. Number four, learning about yourself first. The iLeague team, those young people who we heard um, have been sharing their life and lived experience. Um, they know their identity, they know who they are, and that's what makes them so effective in the partnership space. Um, Kirsty also talked about associate teachers um, seeing their practice and understanding their practice for the first time through, a, well, maybe not the first time, but through a more of a theoretical lens than, um, than what they were used to and how important that was in their partnership. Number five, exploring common interests. Uh, some really big themes came through. Um, and I think, you know, we're talking about having those difficult conversations. They say, you know, start at, your, at the shared understanding, start, go take it, strip it right back to what is our base um, common interest here. And Frian was talking about how, the, how important the rights of the child is and how important equity is. Tamaho talked about the tiriti o watangi. Um, Kirsty from EIT mentioned our code, our standards, and our values. So those are all common interests for everybody in the space. Number six, be vulnerable. Um, the iLead once again uh, showed us how vulnerability breeds vulnerability and trust. Um, MIT spoke about how the uh, new groundbreaking program uh, took them to a place of real vulnerability with their partners. Number seven, always improve your communication. So Lexi spoke this morning about the litmus test of having how, how authentic a partnership is, is um, by asking, well, who's doing the most talking? Um, Freanne also talked about the need for positive communication, and especially when students are in schools and they're, they're talking with their teachers and their teachers are showing uh, communication with parents and Juano. Number eight, forgiving each other. Kirsty and from EIT talked about how they stayed together uh, through the good and the bad times. They had that commitment, which takes forgiveness. And Tamaho also talked about how it's important it is to hold space until your partner is ready. And that can be an act of forgiveness as well. Let them have the space and time they need. Number nine, look for the best in each other. And we had a really good illustration of that um, between the uh, partnerships I lead have with AUT and the other um, universities as well, how it was a reciprocal uh, relationship and partnership and they really saw the best in each other. And Tamaho also talked about how the whare belongs to everybody. Um, and Kirsty also similarly said, um, it's not about the owl, not, uh, sorry, it's about the, the owl, not the yours or the mine. So it's looking for the best in each other and having that shared understanding. Unfortunately, number 10, <laughs> nobody talked about that. <laughs> Sorry, I can't give you any illustration or examples okay. about, about number 10. <laughs> well, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's not such a bad thing. Um, thanks, Maya. You can take that down now. So we once again, you, thank you all for attending. Um, after this, uh, we will be sending out an evaluation form to you all and we really appreciate some feedback on today. We'd like to repeat this um, in the future on different themes um, and maybe revisiting partnerships again next year as well. Um, but, um, and also we'll be sending out the notes um, and you know we'll collate them together and send them out as a record for you. And the recording of the sessions will be um, linked to our website. So we'll send you the links to those as well. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful year. Um, you've worked so hard. Uh, it's testament to you all that we've come through this year um, with some really wonderful graduating students. Um, everybody is, it has really pulled together and it's been a team effort so um, thank you so much for your commitment to education uh, commitment to your students um, and obviously ultimately commitment to the tamariki of Aotearoa so um, nā mihi, go well and I'm going to hand it over to Anikira to finish today's session
koe riri. O tēnā tātou, pai ki te akarongo ki ngā kōrero koe riri i te whare, i tēnei rā. Lovely listening and taking in all this kōrero that has happened in our whare today, ngā mihi ki a kōtou. Tēnā tātou, te uru ngā tū, te uru ngā tū, te uru ngā tapu, te mauri tū, te mauri tapu, te mauri ki te whiwhia, te mauri te wahia, te mauri te rawea, te mauri nō hia, te mauri nō rangi, nō nukutu. Tēnei te mauri ka haka puki, tēnei te mauri ka haka kake, te mauri o ngā tupua, te mauri o ngā atua, te mauri ki uta, te mauri ki tai, te mauri e tauai, ki runga, i a tātou katoa, tūturu haka maua ki a tīna, haumi e, hui e, tāiki e. Hei, ko nga kotou. Ko whāsai koa. Ka kite. 